So I may be a little obsessed with PCA, but it's a very powerful tool. So let me show you again. Over the past several videos, we have been moving through the fundamentals of analytical chemistry uh, from a lot of basic statistics like T-test, ANOVA, and the Q-test, moving into the calibration curve. And now I wanna walk you through PCA clustering and the importance of it, particularly when we're trying to relabel samples or look for patterns in unlabeled data. To demonstrate this, we're going to go back to our soil fertility data, the data we've used for most of these videos. However, I wanna restrip off the labels so that we can attempt to recover them. And so the scores data of PC1 versus PC2 is shown here, and it is a plot of this X array in which we have sampled the data, we have shuffled the data, and remove the labels from that data set. So there's no way to apply new labels directly from the data set, at least in the simulation. And so we're relying upon PCA to help us to determine if there are clusters and apply new labels using a of clustering. So let us do that. And so to begin, we're gonna say from sklearn dot clusters import agglomerative clustering. The reason I'm using agglomerative clustering is because I know from this data set that there should be two clusters, data from field one and data from field two. If you wanna hear more about the data set, check out one of the earlier videos. And so I need to choose an algorithm that allows me to select the number of clusters. To do this, we will create an instance of it, agglomerative clustering. We will tell it to provide us two clusters, which it does by default and we will run the predict method. And then we will run ag.fit predict on our x data array, uh, x on our x data frame. When we run this, you see we now get our two labels and let's just set, um, and let's just set as type equals string. That way we get a qualitative color scheme. We plot this data and we'll just call it ag labels. And so these are predicted labels based on the clustering. And so the way agglomerative clustering works is that it looks for the pair of closest samples and then assigns that to a common cluster and then moves to the next closest pair. And as those pairs increase, depending on what type of linkage we're gonna use, ward, single, average, it will then dictate how those pairs then come together to form new pairs until we get to the defined number of clusters. So what I wanna do now is copy this figure down and let's add a new parameter to the figure called Q and we will assign this to ag labels. So by doing that, you see that we do have two clusters that look pretty reasonable. We have a dense area here. We have another reasonably dense area here and a few points in the middle that have been assigned to group zero. Now, in this case, this looks pretty convincing as a measurement scientist, this could be a good stopping point and we can then assess what makes cluster one different than cluster two. However, I wanna demonstrate that this actually does a really good job by comparing this unsupervised labeling with the original labels. Now, part of the benefit of the way we've set this up is that we have a random state, and so we actually can recuperate our labels by applying the same random state to the sample method. So let's do that and make a new variable called yval, so a validation data set. And we're gonna just take in the field argument and so you see that y val equals field. And these are just field two and field one. And so let's map a dictionary so that we can lay, uh, tie these labels back to the original, back to the labels and ag label, which are zero and one as strings. And these two, this one and two here are integer data types. And so our data map will be two equals, I think let's just, that's zero and field one will equal string one. And so now you see we've replaced both the labels and the data type is now object. And we can compare with our ag labels. So if we look at ag labels again briefly, you see that we now have an array of strings. And so we can compare the accuracy between this and this. 
and I may have it backwards, but yeah, I think I have these labels backwards. There we go. And so to do that, we can set Y val map equal to ag labels. And we will get a Boolean list of true and false values to determine how well we did. We can sum these up. You see that we get 93. Now it's it's hard to know how how good this is. So let's look at why val dot shape. You see that we are over one over two. So let's take this and divide until we can actually get a better sense of our accuracy. And so you can see that based on this, we've relabeled our samples with 91% accuracy, which again is pretty good considering we have, you know, in this scenario, have lost labels to our sample. And so this is just one way that you can see that all hope is not lost. And by using a combination of pattern recognition tools and other strategies, we can recover these labels or apply new labels that could still represent some underlying pattern in the data set. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.